A female wasp can lay up to 50 eggs in a single caterpillar. Ooh. Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all having an amazing day. I've been observing and photographing a very interesting parasitoid wasp species and also took some footage of a specimen the other day. I did a bit of research on this family of wasps and they are super fascinating. So hang around if you want to see some of my best shots, several clips and learn some really interesting facts about them. What you're seeing is a white flank black braconid wasp. This wasp has an orange head, black thorax and black abdomen with white patterns on its flank. The abdomen is banded with white, its wings are tinted in black color, and the larvae of this wasp is known to parasitize the longicorn or longhorn beetle larvae. The wasp has a shining body covered with soft pale hair, and the ovipositor is long, about the same length of the body. Braconid wasps are normally found in heavily wooded areas, such as forests and wetlands, Due to rapid urbanization, forests have reduced significantly in size, so they can also be found these days in many gardens. A little bit about their life cycle and reproduction. The life cycle of a braconid wasp involves the full metamorphosis cycle, starting from wasp eggs to larva, then pupa, and finally the adulthood or imago stage. Having said that, their actual lifespans are quite short. In fact, most wasps will only create one generation. Braconid wasps reproduce like every other wasp in their biological family. They lay eggs in their host, which is normally an insect. After laying these wasp eggs, the eggs source their nutrition from the host and gradually emerge from the egg to form larvae. These larvae proceed to consume the host fully and stay in the braconid wasp cocoons. Following the larvae stage, they weave a pupa around themselves to mature further. At the end of the cycle, an adult wasp emerges from the cocoon. The majority of braconid wasps are tiny in size and are extremely dull colored. Their wings often sport bands and spots. Generally, male braconid wasps are smaller than females. Female wasps are noticeably bigger due to their ovipositor. The ovipositor is the organ that they use to lay eggs in their host. Many species of these parasites have orange or red colored abdomens as well. A little bit about their communication. They essentially communicate with one another by way of their pheromones. Much like in humans and even other wasp species, pheromones play a crucial role in communication with their species. It is used to communicate danger, attraction toward a mate, aggressiveness and also hunger. Females often have long ovipositors, an organ that largely varies interspecifically, which means existing or occurring between different species. This variation is closely related to the host species upon which the wasp deposits its egg. Species that parasitize, for instance, micromoths, have longer ovipositors, presumably to reach the caterpillar through layers of plant tissue. Some wasps also have long ovipositors to bypass caterpillar defensive mechanisms such as spines or the so-called urticating or irritating hairs, or to reach deeply burrowed coleoptera larvae in tree trunks. The larvae of most braconids are internal or external primary parasitoids of other insects, especially the larva stages of beetles, flies and butterflies. Most species kill their hosts, though some cause the hosts to become sterile or less active. Braconids are often used as biological pest control agents, especially against aphids. Endoparasitoid species often display elaborate physiological adaptations to enhance larval survival within the host, such as the co-option of endosymbiotic viruses for compromising host immune defenses. These so-called brachoviruses are often used by the wasps instead of or in addition to a venom cocktail. The DNA of the wasp actually contains portions that are the templates for the components of the viral particles and they are assembled in an organ in the female's abdomen known as the calyx. These viruses suppress the immune system and allow the parasitoid to grow inside the host undetected. 
The exact function and evolutionary history of these viruses are still unknown. I also wanted to share some really fascinating facts about some of these braconid wasps with you. The species Microplides crucipus possesses an extremely accurate sense of smell and can be trained for use in narcotics and explosives detection. Because of the olfactory system, which is linked to its taste receptors, wasps can be trained to respond to the smell of an arbitrary chemical. They train the insects by exposing them to a target odor and then giving them sugar water so they associate the smell with their treat. The researchers have developed a device called the wasp hand. The wasps are put inside a plastic cylinder with a vent hole at one end, a fan that pulls air in, and a tiny web camera inside hooked up to a computer to monitor the wasp's reaction. Joe Lewis, a research entomologist, is the lead inventor of this device. Another really fascinating characteristic of some of these braconid wasps appear to be their resistance to ionizing radiation. While a dose of 400 to 1000 rats can kill an average human, a dose of about 180,000 rats was required to kill a braconid of genus Hebrobracken in an experiment. In a mere moment, I'll show you all the images that I took of this amazing species on a few different occasions. All the shots were taken with the Canon 80D, the Canon EF 100mm f2.8 L lens, and I also used for maximum magnification for this setup the Raynox DCR 250 snap on lens. All the pictures were shot at an aperture of f14 to maximize depth of field. The shutter speed was 180th of a second, and the ISO ranged between 160 and 250. The next three images were from my first encounter with the species. You can see the white flank and also the striped abdomen and also from the high, more oblique angle, the very colorful orange head. The next series of shots are unique. You can see a small ant hanging onto one of its legs. It was trying to shake it off. You might have noticed that already in one of the earlier video clips. It was such a fascinating action to witness and I'm not entirely sure what was happening. Did it parasitize the ant as well? That conundrum still needs to be solved. The funny thing about it is that when I returned to the same spot the following day, I think I saw a different specimen and that one had an ant hanging onto it as well. I haven't really figured it out yet what was happening, but if you do know, please let me know in the comments below. I'm quite fond of the second last series of images, especially where the separation between the subject and the background was really well defined. It was momentarily perched on a protruding piece of bark and the background bokeh was really beautiful. The last three images were shot at the maximum magnification ratio of 1.4 to 1 with the Raynox DCI 250 on. There were a couple of different variations of the first image which was essentially the same but with a slightly different background with different colors. The final image is one of my favorites as I was luckily successful stitching eight separate frames together in Zerian Stacker for maximum depth of field. I also created a final edit where I removed the majority of the specular highlights on top of its head because they looked a little bit too distracting. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new about this unique creature. Please let me know in the comments below which image was your favorite. Also feel free to subscribe if you're new here. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys very soon in the next one.